Hello, Molweni Sanbona. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back, fam. You know the jig. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, um, or leave a comment below if you have any questions or feedback. The title of the video says it all. Today, we are taking a little bit of a U10 16V, Baba. Um, today's topic is um, tackling domestic violence. Without wasting time, let's talk about it. You're probably wondering why are we talking about domestic violence today? I think we should talk about domestic violence anytime. Uh, but the reason why I wanted to talk about this topic is because it has happened to me before and it's happening to someone as we speak. Until we raise awareness and talk about it, I think that we have a long way to go. Another reason why I wanted to dive into this topic is what is happening currently in South Africa. Women are being killed just like that every single day this is not normal this is not okay if you're going through domestic violence today just know that you're not alone someone else is going through the same thing and for this to stop you need to speak up you need to seek help let's get into some of the signs your partner is abusing you right um, and I'll share a little bit of my story and how I overcame a situation like that. Well, my situation started if I was not home at work or out with friends, my partner would call me constantly. Where are you? What are you doing? When are you coming back? Right. And at first I was young. I think I was like in my early 20s. And um, this, you know, I just, I saw the signs, but I chose to ignore them. My ex always threatening to harm himself. Oh, I touched you yesterday. Oh, I called you yesterday and you didn't pick up the phone. You didn't talk to me. You didn't touch me a certain way. Like um, when someone is just like over, 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 because that overly love then changes into jealousy or obsession right and so i think that's what happened in my situation it was just so much love which i'm grateful for the love until it changed into something that i didn't sign up for right um and i think that it's important for us to be able to know and realize when it switches that hey something is up it's either you bring it up and talk about it um, and if you can't talk about it, just be aware of it, right? Other signs that indicate that your partner might be a little bit abusive is isolation, control, and threat of violence. In my situation, there was a lot of control. My partner would literally, um, <laughs> you know, in the car where you can press that button to check uh, your trip or something like that so I would go to work and come back and I didn't realize this was happening until the later that he's going he's um, um, setting the button to um, to monitor um, how far I've driven and I think he knew like my distance to work and my friend's house and stuff like that and I didn't realize this until later and so what I would do is I would come back and just reset the whole trip and I think when he realized that I'm resetting the trips, he got mad. He didn't get mad. He got mad. From there, I think things like started to escalate. Um, and I knew. I think I checked out of that relationship way before I left. So I checked out and I mentally started preparing myself for the exit plan, which is one of the things that I think women or anyone going through abuse should, um, should do. Plan in your head and your exit plan and take necessary steps without being caught. Um, you know, take necessary measures to get yourself out of there. And when you are ready, girl, you just live like you're going to target and you're never coming back. Um, because it's not easy to live in abuse. It's a very dangerous situation. You have no idea when they're going to just click and just go crazy. So you have to make sure that you protect yourself and protect them. I knew earlier in the relationship that this is not normal and things have to change. However, you have to be very smart. I took some of those things that I knew that were valuable for me, that meant a lot to me, you know, sentimental stuff that my mom gave me or my grandma gave me. And being a foreigner, I had to make sure that I got my birth certificate and other valuable documents out of that home and store them with the friend that you trust, right? And so that's what I did because I knew that there will be a time and 
date in this household when I have to run out and leave. And so if I'm running out and leaving, I need to make sure that the things that I'm going to need to take care of the situation after that, the valuable documents are in my possession. Family and friends, if you know someone that's going through domestic violence, please be sensitive when you are trying to help them or trying to be there for them. That question that people ask, why doesn't she leave? Why don't you leave? It's like a, a stab, you know, because it's literally telling the abused person that it's your fault, um, you're damaged, or you've been through this before and you're going through it again. That means you attract this. Nobody wakes up and say, I'm going to choose a man that's going to be abusing me or a woman, which that's a video for another day. When there's children involved in a situation of domestic violence, it's often difficult to try to leave because um, the abused usually fears, you know, the court system. I don't care where in the world you are. Sometimes the court system fails people, you know. Um, so you, you, you're afraid that if you leave, the court system will make sure that the other parent has to see these children unsupervised and you're over there thinking oh my goodness they have to spend the time with the person that abused me and so that's the fear i'd rather be here to protect my children do you start you know they share life together they have kids together it's like how do i leave this and start a different life not only is this life going to be different for you it's going to be different for my children everything is going to be different it has to be different if you want it to change and the gram and the facebook social media has just ruined us um in so many ways that people stay in these relationships because of the syndrome of what are people going to say about Bazotin? Society has normalized unhealthy behavior, so people may not understand that they are in a relationship that's abusive. Emotional abusers destroy your self-esteem, making it feel impossible to start afresh. Ladies, it's possible to start afresh. You have no idea what's waiting for you on the other side. You're probably questioning yourself, how the heck did I get here, right? You're in the situation where you are being abused and you don't know how did I end up here. It can happen to anyone. It actually happens to the strongest people too. A lot of times, um, abusers are going through stuff themselves or they are so insecure about themselves and so they feel they have the right or they feel the need to control you and that's where most of the time the emotional abuse starts i knew i had to get out of my situation when i started noticing name calling or you know someone making fun of my accent or you know just trying to make sure that i feel as less of a human as possible i don't even know how because it didn't work because it was more things that were coming out towards me but it was a reflection of how he felt about himself emotional abuse can have a lasting and devastating impact on your emotional health and sense of self it can take years to undo the damage domestic violence is not a reflection of who you are it's a result of your abuser take the time to take your life back it's not your fault. You can get through this and you can live a normal life. It's possible. Rewrite your own story. It's your life after all. Turn over the new page and write your own story. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. See you guys in the next video. Bye.